to give everyone equal and free access to information. What they, what few foresaw, is that that information could be manipulated and distorted, that news could be faked, or if it was not actually untrue, so slanted and partisan as to deny people the understanding that they craved. Just down the road from where I'm broadcasting this morning is the Googleplex, home to Google News, read by hundreds of millions of people every day in countries all over the globe. I've been speaking to its boss, Richard Gingrass. The internet has given access to everyone in the world to express themselves. That's been extraordinary. I mean, the internet, I don't think any of us would look at the internet and say, has this not been a step forward for civilization? But again, it doesn't mean it's all good. And clearly, we have issues in the ecosystem today with low-quality content, with fake content indeed. But a fifth of Americans believe that Donald Trump won the popular vote. And indeed, Google carried a story saying that Donald Trump won the popular vote. Fake news that clearly had a lot of power. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't have run, should it? We certainly ha shouldn't have surfaced it as highly in our search results as we did that day. Uh, that was a, you know, a terrible and unfortunate error on our part, which we have made great efforts to continue to improve our systems. Uh, it was the exception rather than the rule, but singular exceptions are, are, are painful to us. The trust of our users is crucially important to so us. So to be clear, in that case and more generally, what do you think it's the responsibility of Google to do to make sure things that are palpably untrue, not just controversial, come up at the top of your searches? Our responsibility is the responsibility we felt since the day we started, which is how can we address any query and do our best to find the highest quality, most appropriately authoritative sources that we can against that query. Clearly, we don't always get it right. Do you know whether you can be played in the sense that Facebook have had to admit now that the Russians, in some form, played the system, spent money in order to uh, promote a particular view and a particular propaganda ahead of the election? Are you sure they're not doing the same with Google search? Oh, I think it's important for us to be very humble in this regard and, and recognize that, indeed, people are always trying to game us. But that true has also been true since the beginning of the company, right? It has always been an effort on our part to, to surface the best content, to try to counter those who try to flood the ecosystem with spam or try to trick our algorithms. It is indeed a technology arms race. So given the power you have, the responsibility you take, the number of readers who use you, why does Google always resist saying they're a media company? Because we don't produce media. We take and understand that extraordinary corpus of expression. Uh, that grows, uh, you know, every second, every minute, with thousands and thousands of new documents. Isn't the truth like the duck? You look like one, you sound like one, you are one. It's just that if you admitted you're a media company, you would then have legal responsibility for what you published and for reasons of profit, Google doesn't want to have that responsibility. Well, you're saying we look like a duck. I look in the mirror every morning and I don't feel like I look like a duck. We're not creating media. Uh, we're seeking to organize the world's information and make it easily accessible to our users. You know that the producers of quality journalism often complain that you get rich off the back of their investment. They write the material, they pay for the reporters, Google gets the viewers and readers and then sells the data to advertisers and you pay nothing for it. But that's actually inaccurate because when people come to Google and search for a specific topic, in each and every one of those cases, when they click on a result, that goes directly to the publisher's site and see the publisher's ads. But you'll know not on a scale that any of those newspapers, any of those news organizations think actually pays them to employ the journalists. The truth is, since the innovation of Google, they get poorer and poorer and more and more reporters get laid off. Well, let's keep the issues separate. No, we don't make money off of the backs of news content. We don't put ads on our surfaces. Uh, we drive traffic to the news sites. Now to your second point, if you look at it and see what's happened with the internet over the last 25 years, you have tremendously more content. It's a dramatically different marketplace for information. Let us broaden out a bit to the role of Google. You will know that round the world, but particularly in Europe, the regulators are coming for this company, aren't they? They have decided this company has got too big, it's got too powerful, it is not regulated enough, and it's time it was. 
That's a, a, a large statement. It obviously, uh, response is varied depending on the specific issues. Well, 2.7 uh, billion uh, look, pound fine at, at our, uh, is the reason uh, I ask uh, it. And look, at our size and our role in the ecosystem, I think it's perfectly appropriate for folks to look at us carefully um, and be comfortable criticizing what we do. I think it's our role to continue evolve our approaches and methods to be good citizens in the ecosystem, to do what we can do to help society become smarter in how it takes and manages itself. You joke that when you look in the mirror, you don't look at a duck. Do you look at a man who is helping people get the news and information they want rather than working for a giant corporation that benefits from other people doing all of that? Yes, I am. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of, of, of what I do here and of what we're trying to do here. Again, how do we create a healthy ecosystem for news? How do we work with the publishers to evolve their business models? Right? We recently announced efforts where we're working with publishers to help drive subscription growth, right? Because the economics of publishing have changed. Advertisers have many more mechanisms to find their audiences. And so the very business model of news and content in general has changed. We recognize that. And there are things, I think, that we can do to help. But that's just one of many dimensions of effort uh, that we've undertaken to try to help move the ecosystem in a better way. How do we have a knowledgeable society that can continue to help maintain open and free democracies without governments having to take unnecessary intrusions into how those decisions are made? Richard Ginras, thank you for talking to me. That was the view from the Google Plex. Later, we're going to be talking about the impact which the digital revolution is having on jobs and the world of work. Now, the BBC has a website to help you understand the skills you need for that. It's making it.